25 points. Tony Weisinger, the key is he had 17 points, but 15 in the second half, including overtime. And uh, we look at Purdue, well-balanced scoring today as they scored an 88-82 victory over Michigan State. Uh, Kevin McCants, uh, rather Melvin McCants, with 20 points in that ball game. Scott Skiles uh, won't hurt uh, his scoring average inning. In the Big Ten, he popped in 27, but the Boilers win it 88-82. to And uh, just about a couple of hours ago was Ohio State 73-71 over Wisconsin. Keith Wesson, a pleasant surprise, as he had 19 points for the Buckeyes. And uh, Greg Steinhaus, a fine ball game for Wisconsin, 19 points and five rebounds. Ricky Olson led the way with 23. We're about ready to go for Big Ten basketball. Steve Green joins us on the telecast tonight with Chuck Marlum. Our next tip-off show will originate from Champaign, Illinois on February 20th. Hope you can join us then. Upcoming, the Wildcats and the Hoosiers from the Assembly Hall. Good night, everyone. Indiana University tip-off. Brought to you in part by Eastgate Chrysler Plymouth, Midwest's largest retailer of Chrysler's and Plymouth's. This is the sound of a $65,000 Lamborghini from the outside. This is the sound of a $350 clunker from the outside. Now the Lamborghini from the inside and the clunker from the inside. Because at Highland Appliance's car stereo departments, you can get the best in car stereo, all at Highland's guaranteed low prices. So no matter what your car sounds like on the outside, Highland can make it sound like a million on the inside. Looking for the right store could be a wild goose chase without the complete shopping guide, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. You might find yourself looking for something in all the wrong places lose all sense of direction, arrive too late, and come back empty-handed. Why leave yourself open to all that? Just open the book, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. Nobody but nobody makes a lettuce and tomato hamburger like McDonald's new big DLT. McDLT made fresh for you. Keep the hot hot. And the cool cool. Cause McDonald's did what no one else could do. But keep the hot hot. And the cool cool. The beef stays hot. The cool stays crisp. It's the hottest taste. The coolest fish. Could be the best lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. It's a good time. Hot beef and McD. For the great taste. Cool crisp LT. Indiana National, on the subject of money. By itself, it's only paper. But in the right hands, it becomes a lot more valuable. Indiana National can help you do so much more with your money. Because we don't see money as paper. To us, it's something that gets you where you want to go. Indiana National, more for your money. The Bob Knight Show has moved to a new time. Now, each Sunday at 3.30, you can watch Chuck Marlowe and Bob Knight discuss IU basketball here on WTTV Channel 4. WTTV! from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. Welcome to Indiana University and Big Ten Basketball. Tonight, the Hoosiers, looking for their eighth win in conference play, go against the Northwestern Wildcats. Hello, everybody. Chuck Marlowe with Steve Green. And Steve, 
You've been down here all week. You've had an opportunity to watch the team practice. What have they done to prepare for Northwestern? Well, to tell you the truth, Chuck, they've done very little as far as Northwestern is concerned. Uh, yesterday, for instance, there was an hour and a half film session just on Thursday night's Wisconsin game. There are many things that Coach Knight wants to see improvement on tonight that has nothing to do with the opponent. It has to do with the IU team. Tonight's game is very important. Indiana with a chance to move into a tie for the Big Ten lead. And Steve and I, Joe Smith, will be back with the starting lineups in just a minute. Okay, let's see what's on the multiple listing service. When my dad started this business 30 years ago, he got a GTE phone system and the service that kept it going. Now we've opened two more offices, and our new phone systems include a data network and a paging system. My GTE account manager is there when needed, and the service people are still wonderful. We're delighted with our new phone system and with GTE. Hey, excuse me? You got a minute? Uh, no, not really. I just got home from work. Oh. Yeah, I got a house to clean, dinner to cook, and two kids to take to piano lessons. You sound like a very busy person. I, I am. I hope you've got a few minutes to talk to your Farm Bureau insurance agent about life insurance. Everybody needs it, including you. Look, I really don't have the time. Besides, nothing ever happens to me. Hey, no piano lessons. I come to CarQuest Auto Parts stores? This man, the CarQuest Qualified Counterman. He's got hundreds of thousands of parts, and I can't tell you how often he's helped me out. CarQuest can help with a full line of Ford Warner carb kits, carburetor and emission control parts, and clutches. Get original equipment quality and performance with Ford Warner at CarQuest. I go to CarQuest, because sometimes you need all the help you can get. CarQuest, the right place to buy auto parts. You're looking at Indiana. It's been a very tough season on Northwestern's Wildcats. I was talking to Rich Falk before the game tonight, and he indicates that uh, Tim Weiss, who, who played such an exceptional game against us up there, he had but eight points, but really strong on the board. He's going to be out and probably not seeing the action tonight. He's strained that knee that he's had trouble with all along. And it's been one injury after another for Northwestern. They're one and nine in conference play. We're set to go. Let's go down to Chuck Crabb for the starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Indiana University welcomes you to the Assembly Hall. Here are your starting lineups. At Northwestern, for one forward position, a 6'7 freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 34, Rocky Saviano. And at forward for Indiana, a 6'4 senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 21, Winston Morgan. The other forward for the Wildcats, a 6'9 freshman from Mercer Island, Washington, number 41, Brian Schwabe. At the other forward for Indiana, a 6'7 junior from Westchester, Illinois, number 24, Daryl Thomas. The center for Northwestern, a 6'10 sophomore from Altoona, Iowa, number 25, Sean Morris. In the middle for Indiana, he's a 6'8 senior from Vincennes, Indiana, number 52, Courtney Whitty. At one guard for Northwestern, a 6'1 junior from Harvey, Illinois, number 20, Sean Watts. And at guard for Indiana, a 6'2 junior from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. The other starting guard for Northwestern, a 6'3 freshman from Warsaw, Indiana, number 43, Jeff Gross. Rounding out Indiana's starting lineup at guard, a 6'1 senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 22, Stu Robinson. The head coach for the Wildcats of Northwestern, now in his eighth season, Rich Falk. 
the head coach of the Hoosiers, now in his 15th season on the Bloomington campus, Bob Knight. A special guest, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce to you this evening, seated on the Indiana bench. Three banners in this facility hang for teams that he was a member of. The 1979 NIT Championship, the 1981 NCAA, and the 1983 Big Ten Championship banner. The most valuable player in the Big Ten Conference in 1983, now of the Atlanta Hawks. Welcome once again to the Assembly Hall, Randy Whitman. Colors this evening are being presented by the Army ROTC Color Guard under the command of Cadet Master Sergeant Dave Smith, with the IU Pep Band under the direction of Professor Ray Kramer and featured vocalist Professor Roy Samuelson. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Before it's a big game for Indiana tonight, this afternoon, Illinois, with the measure of Michigan, almost losing the game, but winning in overtime 83-79 after blowing a 17-point lead. Purdue down Michigan State 88-82. Ohio State defeated Wisconsin with uh, Rick Olson of Wisconsin missing a shot with one second left that might have tied it. Final score there, 73-71. Iowa plays tomorrow. Now, Indiana with a chance to move into a tie for the conference lead. As you look at the matchups, and Steve, that should be interesting. A couple of freshmen, as a matter of fact, three freshmen for Northwestern. Sure, and uh, Rich Falk is looking for just good, solid effort from those people. It's difficult for them to come into Assembly Hall and, and play well, but uh, he just looks for the effort. The officials, Tom Rucker, Burl Sell, and Eric Harmon, the tip is controlled by Northwestern. They start Sean Morris, Sean Watts, Jeff Gross, Rocky Saviano, and Brian Schwabe. Gross from Warsaw. Had a pretty good game against Indiana at Northwestern. He fires. And the Hoosiers will control the first board. Comes Indiana. Robinson leading the attack. Courtney Whitting getting his first start in Big Ten play, and he does a good job hustling for the ball, tying up Saviano. It will be Indiana. Out under its own basket. So it's uh, early intensities and the aggressiveness of the Hoosiers give him an opportunity to go for the basket again. Right off the bat, Indiana is showing better ball movement than they did Thursday night against Wisconsin. Lost out of bounds, Indiana with another opportunity. Schwabe with some pretty good effort. He's 6'9", a freshman from Mercer Island, Washington. As you're still looking for their first basket. We're scoreless and played nearly a minute. That's the two-man game that IU wants to set up with Steve and Darrell. Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside for IU this year. 
Indiana overplaying on the inside, so Northwestern brings it back out. And a whistle stops the action. We have a foul. It's going to be an illegal pick or a block against Saviano. The first foul of the game. Rocky from Indianapolis, Bray Buck. 6-7 freshman. That's the first foul of the game. I don't think, Steve, we can really expect to see a blowout much as we saw up at Northwestern earlier, 102-65. No, that was a situation where it was a good shot by Stu as he saw the opening between two Northwestern players, drove in as far as he could, and had a nice 15-foot shot. Well, your earlier point about uh, uh, the difference in the scores between then and now. Here comes Indiana on the conversion. Morgan from the side. Just not going. Saviano and Schwabi battle for the board. Schwabi comes out with it to Watts. Northwestern sets the play on top. We have played nearly two and a half minutes. It's 2 nothing. Indiana with the lead as Saviano. Uh, make that Sean Morris. Number 25, 6'2", sophomore from Altua, Altoona, Iowa. His first basket, we're tied at two. And a whistle and the turnover. Tom Rucker makes the call. Well, it was good defensive effort by Northwestern. Saviano in his haste to get it down the floor commits the turnover. Gross tipped the ball and Saviano was alert to it. This was a little anxious, like you say. Now you look at the turnovers, Northwestern with three already. Up off the glass, that was tipped away. That's going to be goaltending. Eric Harmon on the far side makes the call. Burl Sell also amplifies the call. Let's look. This time uh, we see Darrell do what he does best, spin towards the basket, put it up. Schwabi comes up through the rim and knocks it away. Definite goaltend. The Hoosiers with a two-point lead. In the first three minutes of play, Assembly Hall, Northwestern, and Indiana. Swabby, and he's undercut, and the foul's going to go against whom? Both men, Swabby and Morgan, hard to the floor. We're going to see an offensive foul at the end of this. But Schwabe makes a good move, gets Darrell out of position, right around him for a, a nice shot, but is called for the foul at the end of the, the point. The basket is good. The foul also on Schwabe. The lob inside. And it doesn't touch anything but net. Darrell Thomas with a break had a hand on the ball out on the top, but he forced it up through it for two. Nothing like a little lady luck to steer that one in. Indiana out with the ball. Here comes Morgan. Offensive, yep, offensive foul on Morgan, and let's they count the basket. You can see good aggressive defense with Indiana coming up with a loose ball right about now. Winston knows he's got a lane, lays it up and in. Good defensive play by Northwestern though to get the, the excuse me get the charge. Indiana has a four-point lead, 8-4, 16 and a half minutes left in the first half. Game slow in getting started, and we have another foul underneath. Schwabe backing in on Witte. Or make that Thomas, but uh, he picks up his second foul. Team fouls. Northwestern with three, Indiana one. As you look at Rich Falk in his eighth year. 75 wins. Looking for his 76th tonight. Nice conversation with him before the game started. Inside to Thomas. Morgan follows. Locked away. They're going to call goaltending on that. An alert play by Winston that time. To not give up. We see it punched in to, to Darrell and then the miss shot. Winston's alert to the ball. Comes in for a good rebound basket. Thomas and Morgan each with four to lead the Hoosier scoring. It's 10 4 steal by Alford. He'll pull up and fire from 12. No good.
Devo for two in his first two efforts. First time, maybe a little out of position. Indiana's doing a good job underneath of denying the cutter that goes towards the basketball from getting the, the ball. That was a good outside shot by Sean Morris. Morris has four. He's the leading scorer in 12 of 20 games for Northwestern. Averaging 16.4 points in overall play. Morgan. Need to punch the ball in. Good, good pass. It doesn't fall. Woody hard after the ball. And we have a foul diving for the ball. Schwabi, and I believe, yep, he's going to be called for his third. It's a shame, it really is, that hustle and real intensity, and this is one thing that we talked about with the Rich Falk. In this particular case with Schwabi, all of a sudden gets him in foul trouble. And we have a substitution. We also have a timeout. You're watching Indiana Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The score, Indiana 10, Northwestern 6. It's hard to save money, but I do it. So I deserve to have it count for more at a bank that will keep it safe under its wing. One that'll help it grow with high interest. And always keep a lookout for even more and better ways for me to save. I deserve American Fletcher. AFMB. More ways to save and earn more. I earn the savings advantage. <clears throat> You're saving with coal. Coal? I'm shaving with my electric razor. And it takes coal to produce that electricity. Never thought of it like that. Coal generates more than half the electricity in the United States. It takes coal to fix your breakfast, tune in, and turn on. In fact, on the average, every American uses three tons of coal each year. Amex Coal Company, powering your world. I'm going to join the watch this play once again. There's the score in the first half. And Darrell up quickly with the shot. Good hustle by Courtney on the rebound. And as you said earlier, Chuck, that's those are those difficult calls. You'd, you'd rather see a, a no call. The ball awarded to, uh, to Indiana, for instance, in that case, without a foul being called for uh, the hustle. Chuck, it might be pointed out here in the first five minutes, Indiana with seven more shots, five of 11 for 45%. Northwestern's only taken four shots. They've hit three. Morgan tries to make the penetration across the top, kicks the ball away, and then Northwestern almost turns it over. We played five minutes. It's 10-6, Indiana. Gross. Try to work it inside to Saviano in Indiana. Over and playing gets the steal. Robinson steps up and scores. Excellent conversion bucket there. Stu went right to the shooting position, and Steve was aware of where he was. Over to Waits Watts across the line. Now Sean tries to set it up to Gross. Saviano. Oh, Almost moves that pivot foot. Cookas. Cookas puts it back up and scores. Bo Cookas, a 6'9 sophomore from Cherylville, Indiana. Cherylville, I'm sorry, not Cheryl. Played at Lake Central. Lob inside. And as Woody goes up, he feels Cookas right over his back. Cookas draws his first. Once again, uh, Winston's very aware of uh, Woody's position. Nice fake. Pump fake, get him up in the air. And he knows what's, what to do with it after that. Try to get the two uh, free throws. And they award the ball out of bounds, said he was not in the act of shooting. 12-8, Indiana by four. A more deliberate game than we saw in the early going up at Northwestern. Good move by Thomas. Thomas did not play at Evanston. Here is Morgan off the board, comes out with a ball and scores. That's a way to stay with it, Winston. He felt a little flustered there, but what the heck, let's turn around and jump as high as I can and put it in the hole. Indiana by six with 13 and a half left in the first half. Gross from outside. The 
Thomas making up for what he was not able to do at Northwestern. That was a bounce inside intended for Witte. That gross very alertly stepped to and broke up. Kukas knocked out of his hands by Thomas. In the corner to Alford. And his first two. Steve finally finds the range. He's one for three. Northwestern calls timeout with 13 minutes left in the first half. We are watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The Hoosiers lead the Wildcats 16 to 8. I like to see you smile. You hug me, you hold me, and you're always there. So I'm gonna show I care. This is my gift of love. This Valentine's Day, Hooks has hundreds of ways to say I love you that are almost as good as homemade. Hooks likes to see you smile. We like to see you smile. Coach, you're a living legend, an American folk hero, a winning basketball coach. Now, I'm not sure about any of those things, but I'll tell you one thing. You are a really big TV star. Yeah, but you could be as big a TV star as I am. How'd I do that? Well, sell this RCA Dementia, a state-of-the-art complete stereo audio video system at a great price. If I go on TV for H.H. Gregg, what are you getting out of it? Let me coach a basketball game. No, I'd just rather fade into obscurity than that. Back to the Assembly Hall on a Saturday night, 16 to 8, with 13.02 to play here in the first half. Indiana off to another fine shooting night, 8 of 15 for 53%, and Chuck, 4 of 7. Eight more shots for Indiana than Northwestern. The rebounds uh, only 6 to 4, but the undoing right now, guys, in the first seven minutes, eight turnovers on the part of the Wildcats. Indiana still with its starting lineup. Witte, Morgan, Robinson, Thomas, and Alford. Joe, the eight turnovers you talked about is something that uh, Coach Knight had discussed with the team yesterday. And that has put more pressure on not only the passer, but on those people cutting towards the ball. Sean Morris with his third field goal. 6'10 sophomore has six. Northwestern trails by six, 16'10. Leanna patiently working with the ball. It goes into the post. Almost knocked off his feet, now kicked away, and what do we have? It, well, it's going to be a defensive kick of the ball, so it'll be ending on his ball. The good thing there is that we're aware to the middle on this zone. We have to punch that in, even if we don't get the shot. It's just to make that uh, zone aware of uh, people that we have underneath. Well, Rich Ball thought that Woody might have moved his pivot foot on that post move. He was complaining a little bit to the officials underneath and back out it comes as Thomas makes the save. Watch the ball, go. Watts tries for the steal. Alford goes to Morgan. Winston has apparently the max Steve Green of seeing what is available and with the instant start that he has being able to capitalize before it closes down. You made a good point there about his instant start. That first step of his is awfully quick. And he knows if he can get in close to the bucket, he can out jump most of the guard opponent. There's a good steal. Alford will drive and lay it off the glass. Saviano very wisely laid back. So Alford has two field goals. Indiana has doubled the score, 20-10, with 11-25 remaining first half. Hoosiers hoping to be able to move into a tie for the conference lead with Michigan, a loser this afternoon, 83-79 in overtime to the Illini. Whistle. And they'll keep the ball apparently at this end as the foul will go against Indiana. It's against Morgan, his first, uh, second, second. And Morris with the ball. We've got to pay particular attention to him. He's off to a good start. And on the pass, there's a foul. Substitution for Northwestern. Dixon, Roy Dixon, number four in the lineup, replacing Watts. Dixon is a six foot senior from Detroit. Gross was also taken out at that timeout. And we were doing a real good job of keeping him away from his favorite shot positions. Morris puts it down on the floor and Steve takes it away. Wheels and scores. Oh, that is one of those fine All-American moves by Steve Alford. And once again, it was a move that 
He just didn't invent right there. He's practiced that kind of move time and again. Alfred steps up on Dixon. Fullen. Ellett Fullen in the lineup now. Bring you up on his statistics in just a moment. Point I wanted to make about Gross going out, and we were doing such a fine defensive job on him. Sometimes when a substitute comes in for someone that you've been aware of, you may have a tendency to relax, and that's exactly what we don't need at this time. We just need to keep the pressure on. Out of bounds to the Wildcats. We'll see Todd Jablow from Indiana at this dead ball opportunity. Let's look at the steal of Alfred's here, and you can make the comment, Steve Green, as Courtney Woody takes a rest. Well, that time, Steve uh, was just off of his man, very aware that Morris was not uh, paying too much attention to anybody but the defensive man on him. Came in for a good steal, good hands. Dixon works on Alford, down to Fullen. Two from the corner, Elliot Fullen. Springfield, Ohio, Jr. Averages 9.9 .9 points per game, and he had nine against Indiana at Evanston earlier. To Jadlow, out to Robinson. That was good movement. Good movement against the zone. Got it in, got it back out to Stu for a pretty decent shot. We're inside 10 minutes. And Indiana with a 22-12 lead. Plays it off. Dixon, there was a loose ball. And Robinson came up with the steal. Oh, there's a good feed between 6'10 and 6'2. 6'10, Todd Jadlow, 6'2, Stu Robinson. Nice move. Good pass by Jadlow. Kept his composure. 24-12 Indiana as the scoring pace is picked up somewhat. Dixon knocked out of bounds. Overplay by Alford. And it'll be the Wildcats to toss it in. Right in front of the Indiana bench. Steve's playing the passing lanes very well. That's the lane that uh, when your man does not have the ball but as the next in line to receive, you, there's, a, there's a line between the ball and your man. And he's staying right in that line. Elliot Fullen, you can see Robinson staying close to him. Now back to Fullen. Northwestern trying to get an offense motivated, trailing by 12 points, 24-12. Good move by Dixon out to Morris, and he's fouled before he goes for the shot. And that'll be against Darrell Thomas. Thank you. Indiana's defense was pretty good, but now we have a little bit of a breakdown. You see the guard penetrate. Of course, get it to their hot man right now, and that's Morris. Well, they say Morris was in the act of shooting, so Sean will go to the line. The first free throw attempt by Northwestern this evening, Joe. First time he's been to the line. He's a good free throw shooter, Chuck. The second leading free throw shooter on the team, about 82%. Northwestern's doing a lot of good things. They're shooting 60% from the field. It's tied in rebounds, but the old bugaboo has been 11 turnovers here, and that's really killed him. Morris, the second is good. He has eight, and we have another substitution. Watts back in, replacing Dixon. Sean Watts with just enough time to catch his breath is back in the lineup with 849 remaining in the first half. Indiana basketball from Assembly Hall. The Hoosiers with a 24-14 lead. Northwestern staying in 2-3 zone. Morgan's move is very quick to the baseline, but the shot won't fall. The Wildcats now showing patience bringing it up. Gary Carmen makes the call. There's the hand high in the air. Five seconds as he was under guard. And that really upsets Rich Ball. Coach Knight was helping to count that. In case Carmen didn't catch it. <laughs> right about the four point. Four point five mark. <laughs> did you ever help? Five. Did you ever help count when you were on the floor? Not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> better not. I'll leave that to Coach. Coach and I much better at that. Inside to Thomas. There's the fall away jumper, and Thomas at six. Oh, 
Morgan with another assist. He's really coming on strong, Joe, in the, in the assist he, as his confidence has increased. He's got two tonight. He had eight, and uh, boy, what a job. There's a nice pass inside for easy two. Has a little back cut. And credit Elliott Fuller as he got behind Stu Robinson. Fuller now with four. Cut there, seven for 11. 64%. Alford from outside, two more. That one just slid across the front of the rim and dives. Steve averaging 22.6 in Big Ten play, number two in Big Ten scoring. 7-18, 7-17 remaining in the first half. Off Morris's hands, out of bounds as Jadlow played him pretty tight, and we have a timeout with 7-13 remaining. You're watching Indiana Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana leads Northwestern 28 to 16. If you just ask for a light beer, I'll have a light. You never know what you'll get. That's me packing the car. Best vacation ever. Is Rock City, Texas, L.A. All in three days. A Bud Light. Here I am in Death Valley. That's me looking for water. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste. Wait, there's more. Ask for Bud Light, because everything else. Give me a light. It's just a light. That's me packing the car. Best vacation. My dad's a great guy. He's entertaining. Yeah. And he's got a terrific sense of humor. <laughs> Mom says he takes care of me in ways I don't even know about. Life insurance from your Farm Bureau insurance agent. Another way to show how much you care. It's Indiana 28, Northwestern 16, with 7.13 remaining in the first half. Chucky, we're talking about Winston Morgan. He and Stu won two in the assist department, and that's a good indication exactly where the ball is going offensively, and uh, 137 between them, and boy, they had a combined for a great game against uh, Wisconsin. Robinson had six, and, uh, and Winston had eight, and along with four steals and six rebounds. So as you alluded to, Winston certainly is developed into as fine an all-round player as he has in his Indiana career. There's the, the turnovers, kill. and that, that's a decided difference, Steve Green. Sure is, and uh, let's give a lot of credit to IU's defense at this point. The Hoosiers after that timeout, using the clock, Chadlow, he's a good outside shooter. That one doesn't go, however. Once again, that's not a bad shot, but it's a much better shot after four or five passes of making that zone work a little bit. Is it hard to pass up something like that, Steve, when you have so much open room? It's hard for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't mix very often. Very difficult for me. I can't speak for Todd, but uh, once again, if you're instructed to come down and take the four or five passes and then take that shot, that's one thing. They call the foul on Winston Morgan as everything sagged in under the basket on Winston. That's number three. And Rick Calloway replaces Morgan. Galloway, who's been nursing a bad cold and a sore knee. Actually, not a cold, but a virus. Affected him the same way. He had a, this whole team sounded like a gag of beast last week in practice. Good hustle by Thomas, and it's out of bounds, Northwestern. That has to be one of the biggest fears, I think, of, of a coach and a trainer is, is the virus or the flu. Sure, it takes a lot out of the, the players. Now, there's a great hustle moved by Thomas, and Coach Knight was up applauding that one. But, I mean, you've, you've got fears that it can hit the whole squad. For sure, and uh, it, it really hit the starters more than anyone else on the team for some odd reason. And uh, so there hasn't been much time where these five or six players that are playing a lot now that have played together during the week of practice. Elliott Pullen's basket pulls Northwestern back to within 10, 28-18 as we near the six-minute mark. Galloway sporting a new haircut. Jadlow looking toward the basket, passing back. Galloway wasn't ready, and Fullen drives and scores. Fullen with his fourth field goal. And it's 28-20 as the Wildcats inch their way back. Indiana 
looking for the post. Here's Thomas. Well, they're really sagging back on Darrell. Penetration and knocked away. Sean Watts thought he had a clean block, but he's called for a foul. That's the first on Sean, the 6'1 junior from Harvey, Illinois. And the sixth against the team. The quick move by Rick as he recognized just what you were saying, that the, the zone is very aware of the underneath men now. And we need to get a little more penetration out front and get those shooters in position so that we can spread the zone a little bit. Hope Rick's got the stocking cap to put on that uh, fresh haircut of his so he doesn't... And catch go later with that fire. Well, we were looking down on the bench. Patrick Knight has a new haircut, too. Fun to watch the styles, the way they, they cut their hair, and to watch them change. When you played, uh, anyone that had hair any longer than just touching the ears, that was taboo, wasn't it? Now they like it really short well, again. Exactly. Yeah. I was in school that everyone but the basketball team we all. <laughs> It was pretty easy to pick out in class. That's uh, Elliot Fullen once again. He has 10. And he's the spark for the Wildcats. 30-22, an eight-point deficit. Fullen and Morris carrying the bulk of the scoring for Northwestern. Morris has eight. But he's taking a rest. No, he isn't. He's out there. Alford. They've done a good job of staying on top of him. And there's the rebound to Kukas. The drive, a line drive shot. Kukas recovers. Saviano fires and scores. Rocky Saviano's first field goal. And now it's a six-point game. 4-15 remaining in the first half. Knocked out of his hands, and it'll be Indiana to toss it in. Another substitution. This is Buford. Barry Buford from Indianapolis. He is number 11, played at Cathedral. And he's in the lineup replacing Saviano. Indiana with new life. Underneath, there's a good feed in Thomas. Callaway hook up well for two more. 32-24, the Hoosiers by eight. Whistle stops the action. And it's a three-second violation called against Northwestern. At the same time, we have timeout, 346 left in the half. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The score, Indiana 32, Northwestern 24. Your Indiana Ford dealer invites you to the premier event of the car buying season. Their February inventory tax sales event. And the stars are out. Here's the Motor Trend 1986 Car of the Year, Taurus. This is the top one, Ranger. Plus 7.9% financing on new 4x2 Ranger and F-150 pickups. Plus Ford's three-year unlimited mileage powertrain warranty on all 86 Ford cars. See the exciting lineup of cars and trucks at your Indiana Ford dealer today. A simple shopping trip without the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages could be an unforgettable experience. You could end up going in circles or going no place fast. And getting there, too late. Going down one blind alley after another. Why go through that when you can go through Indiana's most complete shopping guide? Before you leave, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. Back in the assembly hall, three minutes and 46 seconds. Indiana leads by eight. The lead was trimmed down to six, Chuck. And Steve, just a minute ago, thanks in large part to Northwestern shooting 11 of 17 for 64-7. They're out rebounding the Hoosiers 11 to six. But again, without repeating ourselves, but it is a key element of the ball game. Turnovers 14 to four. And according to my stat, Chuck, that uh, one, two, five, five turnovers or 10 points conversion points has been uh, straight relative to that so we only have an eight point lead gentlemen that was an interesting graphic we saw a moment ago bench points 12 to 2 northwestern 
right, Indiana with the ball, clock running. We're down to 3.40 left in the first half, and the Hoosiers with an eight-point lead. And Callaway picks his feet up before he puts the ball down. Another turnover. That against Indiana's five. Northwestern with 14. The thing that troubles me right now is that Northwestern is the team that's playing inspired. And here we are, eight points up. And they're the ones that seem to be more intense at this point. So if you remember at Northwestern, it was the same way. And here's a hand on the ball and a foul called on Jadlow. And that, whether or not they're going to say he was shooting, I don't think they do. Eric Harmon runs the baseline on Jadlow, his first personal. If you remember, even in the blowout up there at Northwestern, uh, Northwestern was just never out of it. Now, they were scoring-wise, but not intensely. I mean, they still had the spirit. Except the thing it told them up there was that 31% shooting they had. Hand on the back by Thomas. And that evens the team fouls at six. On Darrell, his second. That time Morris was able to beat Darrell towards the ball. Darrell gave a little shove right before the ball arrived in Morris's hands. Lucas double dribble. Both hands on the ball as he lost it. And that's the 15th turnover for Northwestern. We call their look at Rich Falk, eight years. The only place he's ever coached at Northwestern. Three minutes, 11 seconds remaining. First half of play. It's still 32-24 as Alford pops and scores from outside. That one was good the whole way. He was square to the basket. He had his position against the zone, just where he favors. Two points. Watts looking for somebody. Finds Morris. Good move by Morris. The center tries to take it in. Feeds it off. An air ball, but Jadlow comes up with the errant shot by Watts. Coaches look like they're, they're really trying to spread this out, Steve. We need to get uh, closer in against the zone and quicker passes. Uh, that's a good feed to the post, and it won't fall. Nothing wrong with that, except the end result. But there we had three or four passes and got it down underneath. And one of Darrell's favorite shots. I think Knight's going to try to get Thomas out before he picks up another foul. And Callaway has it knocked off his hand, but last to touch the ball was Terry Buford. And Darrell will sit down. Here's Todd Meyer. And that rebound, or attempted rebound, you could almost tell that Rick Callaway's legs just weren't in it. He was just a little off. Both times he tipped the ball, but nine times out of ten, he's feeling strong, feeling healthy. He's going to get that thing and be headed up the court. Well, he's had a real battle with the virus. Probably has suffered worse from it than anyone else on the team. Robinson. Once again, Watts tries to steal. Off the rim, no good. Meyer out battle for the rebound. With a minute and a half left to play, first half. Western wants to whittle on this eight-point lead, ten-point lead. There it is, eight again, as Sean Morris connects for his tenth point. Morris plays both ends of the court very well. He has, in addition to his 16 points scoring average, led the team several times in rebounds by Jadlow off the front of the rim. and. In the early going, as the clock ticks down to one minute, Northwestern's patience could result in two more. They've doubled the rebounding, 14 to 7. Northwestern. Around the ball goes, Fullen makes a ball fake, the whistle on the opposite side of the floor, and the fouls against Indiana. Or is it? Northwestern was called for a, a push. Tom Rugger makes the call. Terry Buford, 6'4 freshman, with his first foul. And that's the limit for Northwestern putting Indiana at the line. And Steve Alford, who has had his problems there recently. And 
but he, I'll tell you, he shot a lot of free throws. Did he shoot a lot when you were down here yesterday, Steve? Not many at all. Once again, there was just a lot of talking yesterday. Trying to rest these blue weary and injured players. Medical profession makes a fortune off basketball teams, doesn't it? <laughs> I have to ask Dr. Alfeld that one. Alford second is good. He has 12. And Indiana back to a 10-point lead, 36-26 with 40 seconds. Clock ticking away. We're coming to the end of the first half from Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Bullen. Watts almost lost that one off his chin. 18 seconds. No shot clock. Steve disturbed. He thought he might have had a steal there. Just a little bit late in getting out. Off the foot of Jeff Gross. And good pressure by Indiana. Resulting in that turnover. Unofficially. 16. So with five seconds, what can Indiana do? Will they look for a midcourt shot? Let's try to get it up as soon as they can. Go with it, Rick. We got it. And I think Northwestern's uh, certainly thinking the same thing. Three seconds, two, one. Alford lets it go. It's good. Boy, I tell you, you couldn't time it any closer than that, could you? Not at all. And I was going to tell you that I think they're going <laughs> to give it to Steve. <laughs> but I couldn't get out in time. <laughs> Let's take a look at that again. I don't know if graphically we can see the clock or not. He wasn't thinking past. Let okay. me tell you that, folks. There, there's, yes, sir. There's the shot. Now, we have another look at this thing, and you'll see the clock. There it is. One second. It's off his hand as the clock goes double zero. Okay, we've come to the end of the first 20 minutes of play. And the score, Indiana 38, Northwestern 26. We'll be back to check on the individual scoring in just a minute. Dr. Tavel's Premium Optical announces the best brain price ever. Free. Trust Dr. Tavel's Premium Optical for quality eyewear at the lowest possible price. That's a promise from the doctor. Without Amex Coal, practice would be over. It takes coal to produce the electricity that lights basketball courts, all the way from backyards to assembly hall. Amex Coal Company. Bet you never thought of us as a basketball power. Why shop all over town? For a good deal on a used car. When Dave McIntyre, Chevrolet and Isuzu Center keeps over 250 clean used cars and trucks in stock. Priced from just $1,500 to $7,500. And most people qualify for GMAC financing with just $240 down. Shop the dealer who sells thousands of clean used cars and trucks. Dave McIntyre, Chevrolet and Isuzu Center. Your one-stop used car headquarters. You pour seed and fertilizer, herbicide, and hard work into your corn crop. You could protect that input with just any rootworm insecticide, or you could use Lorsban 15G and get protection from rootworms, as well as cutworms, wireworms, grubs, seed corn maggots, and other insects, and avoid problems with seed safety. This year, get more out of your rootworm insecticide. In conservation or conventional tillage, use Lorsban 15G. It's corn security. How does it feel to take a thousand pounds of raw power into the game and make him run for me? Don't be coming over on me this time, Jock. No safe trip, McCarran. What's this horse got? Whoa. Easy, boy. Easy now. Straight now. That's it. Okay, partner. Show me something. Sports Illustrated. Get the feeling. We appreciate it. I think Coach would, too. He doesn't have a chance to see this too much. Uh, obviously, he's in the locker room. Once in a while, he's been a little late in getting in the locker room, but that's interesting. 38-26, the score. As we tick down in our halftime procedures, 
and uh, we have a little presentation being made out there. The Spirit of Sport All Nighter took place down here last night, Steve Green, and uh, something that's really grown popular with a lot of the students. They're making a presentation to Special Olympics right now, about $10,500 they made, and that's pretty good effort for 24 hours for these kids. It's all volunteer help, and they do, they just do an excellent job, and our hat is off to them this evening. What about this game, Steve, uh, with the time that they spent doing films and all that, uh, looking for just a little bit more up-tempo, a little more concentration. Are you seeing it as a former player? Uh, somewhat, and that uh, I see with some of the turnovers that we've caused Northwestern to have. Uh, there was much talk yesterday about staying in passing lanes and making sure that the passer is getting pressure as well as the man that's going to receive the ball. I've seen some of that. Uh, much talk about blockouts yesterday and about just being aware now uh, we may not have been as aware on offense as coach wants us to, wants the, the team to be and getting the good shots uh, against that zone that are available so we'll see what he talks about at halftime okay tonight's game between indiana and northwestern is being played at assembly hall in bloomington indiana the score at halftime the hoosiers 38 the wildcats 26. I know my business, and when that business needs a loan, I need a bank with a strong business profile. One that knows it sometimes takes money to spread your wings. And where I can rely on not just one business specialist, but a whole flock of them. I need American Fletcher. AFNB, the money, the attitude, the team for corporate lending. I took the business advantage. We like to see you smile. We know that you're busy with no time to spare. And you need someone who cares. Hooks likes to see you smile. We're here to help you say that she's someone special. We'll show you the way. Hooks likes to see you smile. We like to see you I'll never forget that cold, rainy day we moved into our first home. All we had was a couple of old lamps, a few cardboard boxes, and a watercolor that we got on our honeymoon. What a day! Well, how about... Uh, over, over the, the fireplace! fireplace. <laughs> what do you think? Perfect. We've lived in lots of different houses since then, but they've had one thing in common. They've all been protected by a homeowner's policy from Farm Bureau Insurance. How about over, over the, the fireplace? fireplace. Oh. <laughs> Actually, they've had two things in common. How do you like it? Bravo! That's nice. Sports profile tonight is with IU swimmer Cliff Lucian. We'll visit with him in just a few minutes. Almost everywhere you turn these days, you'll see people on television talking about the advantages of aerobic exercises. Bud Getchell, executive director of the National Institute for Fitness and Sport, thinks all kinds of exercises can be beneficial, but he cautions about overdoing it. When people work out, uh, we feel that after they've had their a good warm up, that they need to work at about three quarters effort. And this means, this is conversation exercise. They don't have to go all out and they don't have to hurt in order to get in good shape. And so we're able to monitor this by checking their heart rate. People can check their heart rate and stay well within themselves. And these are the things that really improve their circulation and their function of their heart. And this is really what fitness is all about. The important thing is that many people feel that it, from past experience that you've got to hurt or you've got to punish yourself. And this is not true. You just have to work well within yourself, but you have to sweat a little bit and show a little effort. We'll be back in just 30 seconds with our Cliff Lucian Sports Profile.
I'm a recreation major and I transferred here from Nebraska in 1982 and the recreation program here at Indiana is a, one of the finest in the country and what I'd like to do with my degree is stay here another semester and train through and see how well I can do at World Trials this summer and then I'd like to train some more for DOC and get in the master's program here, at, the graduate program here at Indiana University and hopefully my long-term goal is to go on and teach at a major college or university. The main reason I came here was DOC counseling. Some backstroke and DOC's changed my stroke a little and made me, got me where I was last year with the Big Ten championships and stuff and we're hoping to go further this year with the team. Cliff Lucian is a recreation major at IU. For IU Halftime, I'm Kit Field Kruger. And that's an interesting feature on swimming with Doc Councilman. We'll pass along and update some information. The IU women's and men's swim teams today defeated Illinois. The women 59-54 and the men 74-39 over the Illini. Congratulations to Doc Councilman and our swim team. Let's pause now to hear from our local stations. This is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. On March the 1st, Stewart's Gum and Discount Oldsmobile must pay tax on all of our new Oldsmobiles, extra clean used cars, and luxury vans left in stock. To keep from paying this huge tax on the state's largest selection of luxury vans, Stewart's Gum is offering 7.9 equivalent financing on select vans. With 7.9 financing plus discounts up to $5,000, we will make it easy for you to own a new luxury van. So hurry, see us now. Stewart's Gum and Discount During Dollar Dazzlers at True Value Hardware Stores, look what just $2 will buy. Choose the Taylor Dial Window Thermometer featuring Fahrenheit and Celsius scales. Prepare favorite meals in the Miro 10-inch non-stick aluminum fry pan. Make painting less of a mess with the Easy Painter 9-inch Paint Shield Roller. Or power battery-operated equipment with Rayovac heavy-duty batteries. See the $2 selection during Dollar Dazzlers at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. We found an increase in yield for the lasso atrazine plot, and we were uh, really surprised. John Neidlinger will be using more premixed lasso and atrazine in the future. It opens up our eyes and gives us uh, opportunities for us to cut our production costs. Lasso or premixed lasso and atrazine. Less stress, more yield. I guess my philosophy is that uh, the, the easiest way to cut our production costs is actually to increase our yield. Well, the halftime statistics bear out a lot of what we see on the board, 38-26, Indiana with that 12-point lead. Look out for the uh, turnovers. Uh, that's Northwestern's downfall, as we've mentioned. And then we look at the rebound total, and I know there's some discussion at halftime about that right now because, once again, uh, that was pointed out to the team that they've got to start at least staying even with some of these teams on the rebound totals aggressively going to the board. Both teams shooting very well for field goal percentage. Well, Northwestern exceptionally well, 60% to be down by 12, Joe. Well, I'll tell you one thing, we got a couple of interesting stats. Steve was pointing out, as you can see there, the 16 turnovers, 14 points directly attributed to those turnovers for Indiana, and we have a 12-point lead. That's been the biggest lead in the ball game, and Indiana has held it several times, uh, breaking out of a 10-6 oh, early lead. They led 22 to 10, 24 to 12, 26, 14, 28, 16, and then a nice run by Northwestern, Chuck, to cut it to 30 to 24. That's been the closest they've been able to get to, and then Indiana went into the dressing room with a nice 8-2 uh, to two run to take a 12-point lead. Bench scoring, uh, surprisingly enough, Elliott Pullen is 5 of 6. He's got 10 points. They've outscored Indiana's bench in the first 20 minutes, 12 to 2. Very interesting graphic. In February, this is the this is the nightmare. <laughs> That's right, Joe. Uh -oh. The nightmare Indiana faces next Sunday at Ohio State, at Illinois Thursday, then a week from Sunday at Purdue and Minnesota, that's the salvation, is that they return to Assembly Hall against them on Thursday the 27th. Stay tuned now for second half action. Both teams are back, and we'll be right back after these messages. I've always
always been able to tell the stage my husband's going through by the kind of car he drives. First, it was the anti-establishment phase. Then, <laughs> the family man. Next, climbing the corporate ladder. Lots of different cars, lots of different lifestyles. But every car we've owned has been protected by Farm Bureau Insurance. Hey, baby, what do you think? I think they call this the midlife crisis. If you just ask for a light beer, be a light. you never know what you'll get. Dogs. <laughs> no, actually, uh, Bud Light. So if you want the less spilling light beer with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light. Yours? No. Because everything else... Give me a light. Showtime! It's just a light. Looking for the right store could be a wild goose chase. Without the complete shopping guide, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages, you might find yourself looking for something in all the wrong places. Lose all sense of direction. Arrive too late. And come back empty-handed. Why leave yourself open to all that? Just open the book. The Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. It's easy to take for granted how much some people have until you're reminded how much others don't. These days, it takes a special kind of person to help make things better for all of us. You've always known Hooks Pharmacists are an important part of your health care needs. It's good to know they're an important part of your community, too. Hooks likes to see you. Bloomington invites you to break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away to Bloomington. There are the standings coming into tonight's game. Michigan with its third loss of the conference season and overall this afternoon to Illinois. And Indiana with a chance to move into a tie. Iowa will play at Minnesota tomorrow. And you can bet they're going to be ready there because they're a half game out if they should win tomorrow at Minnesota. And then Purdue with a win today. Michigan State playing Purdue and losing. Illinois with a victory. And then Ohio State, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Northwestern. Wildcats with not too bad an overall record, 7-13. and 13, But 1-9 and nine in the Big Ten. Taking a look at those standings, we also see overall records of six or seven Big Ten teams that could very well get them in a postseason competition. So there's a lot to be played for here the last five or six, seven games of the year besides the Big Ten championship. I think six got in last year in the NCAA, and mm -hmm. at least that many the way, you know, things hold sway here the rest of the way out. It'll be Northwestern to toss it in. Saviano handles the ball, and it comes in immediately to Elliott Pullen. Pullen not starting, but he is starting the second half. Watts back to Pullen. Northwestern trailing by 12, and they get the first two baskets, their first two points starting the second period on the basket by Schwabe. It's always a big lift for a team because you know that's set play from halftime. Let's go out and try to get two right away doing this or that. And they sure ran up the direction. Indiana going with Stu Robinson and Steve Alford. That's a shot by Thomas off the rim. It's Callaway and Morgan to start the second half. Watts high off the top of the key. Now Schwabe comes back for the ball. It's off the rim and a foul as Schwabe tries to follow, and I believe he's picked up his fourth foul. Tough break for Northwestern. Real quick fourth foul for Schwabe. It is whistled on Brian Schwabe. And immediately, Rich Ball goes right to the bench. Bo Kukas will be checking back in. Kukas played at Lake Central. He's from Sherrillville. And the 6'9 freshman from Mercer Island, Washington, with his fourth foul, will take a rest as you look at Kukas. Indiana looking for its first baskets of second half. 
leading by 10. Steve takes the outside shot, and the rebound comes down to Northwestern. And immediately, the Hoosiers back. Good conversion defense, but we have a foul before the drive as Eric Harmon whistles the call, and it'll go against Indiana. We had mentioned Winston's first good step. Now let's take a look at Morris's because he seems to be able to get by Darrell or whichever player that we have on him. He's able to get that first step towards the hoop. Whistled foul was against Thomas, his third. And Pullen to the baseline for the ball in Northwestern. Trailing by only 10 with a chance to make a little bit more of a contest out of this game. Saviano and Morgan does a good job of adjusting on him. Partially blocked and goes right past Callaway's head. Kukas from the free throw line. And followed up and in by Sean Morris. That's a good offensive board by the sophomore from Altoona, Iowa. Great play by Morris. Really aware of what's going on in the court. Alfred inside to Thomas. He makes the baseline move and scores. Will it count? It is. Good. Tom Rucker indicates and the foul against Northwestern. Nice feed in from Steve and then the spin move by Darrell. Scoop is up, on the, up in the air. Darrell is really good at getting up to the free throw line after making a, a field goal like that. He's a good three-point man. Darrell Thomas looking for the free throw. It doesn't fall. Callaway with good effort. And on the steal, here comes Northwestern. Fullen just in front of the line, and it won't go. Here's a rebound to Morris. Good conversion effort by the Wildcats. 40-32, the Hoosier lead is eight. Alford with a feed, and Callaway makes the stop. Oh, that play was set up with a good ball fake by Steve Alford. And then Callaway's quickness right to the hoop. Excellent play. Well, Rick has only four, but those two probably drew more decibels out of this crowd of 16,102 than any other score tonight. Maybe with the exception of Alford's basket at the end of the first half. The ball was kicked by Steve, so it'll still be Northwestern to control. Once again, we've already... The pass has already passed into Callaway. I'll tell you how hard Callaway went to that basket. He was springing and leaping so high, even though he grabbed that rim, he didn't pull down that release basket. He was still on his way up when he stuffed that ball. Good point. Whistle stops the action inside, and the foul is going to go against Northwestern as Indiana walks to the other end of the court. It's against Kukas. His third, a little push underneath, caught by Tom Rucker. We've played three minutes of the second half. It's 42-32 Indiana. And Morgan loses the ball off his leg. Northwestern trying to set it up. Knocked away. And the steal, here comes Alford. Won't go. Heading into a transition game that uh, this time Northwestern almost comes out on the better end, but it was an offensive goaltending call, and Reg Falk stomps his feet in protest. Good fast break, and here's the ball off the glass. Handball and rim all in one time that time for Kukas. Tough break. Bob Knight pleads his case with Steve Alford. Says a couple of words. Let's see what happens. Indiana shows a little more patience. There's the feet inside. And an offensive foul. Pearl Sell makes that call. As Thomas made a turn after getting a good feed. Darrell must have said boo or something here because it just scared Kukas. 
to the point where he fell back. I don't know how much contact you saw there. Coach uh, had something to say about that to one of the officials. Well, at any rate, that's the fourth foul on Thomas. A pleading gesture from Coach Knight as Thomas walks over to Sedan. He might be saying something to the effect that you've got to be aware that you have three fouls and not to get in a situation where even an iffy call can put you on the bench. 16 minutes remaining, knocked and saved by Callaway, but right to Kukas. Watts to the baseline. It won't fall. Here's Morgan with a big board. And over the back foul is going to be called on Kukas. And all of a sudden, he's picked up three quick ones in the second half, four in the game. And Rich Falk goes to his bench. We will see for the first time Brian Pitts, a seven-foot senior from Chicago. But first, a timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The score, Indiana 42, Northwestern 32. It takes a lot of coal to run this company. Coal? This is an office, not a factory. All our machines are electric. And it takes coal to produce that electricity. Never thought of it like that. Coal generates more than half the electricity in the United States. It takes coal to make your computer compute, the typewriter type. In fact, on the average, every American uses three tons of coal each year. Amex Coal Company, powering your world. How did you get way out here? That baby will go anywhere. Got it insured? Got Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Good. Now, how about life insurance? I can take care of myself. Okay, but life insurance is a good way to protect your family. Wait, do you hear something? I don't hear anything. Farm Bureau for Auto Insurance, Farm Bureau for Life Insurance. The same agent handles both. Well, it uh, could have been bears. There's the score, 42-32. You made a comment during the timeout just a moment ago, Steve, that uh, Indiana seems to be playing as if they're a little bit tired. Is this, uh, is this indicative of coming off the, off the virus bug and the, and the slight injuries they've had, or, or what? It, it sure can be. Uh, if you pay close attention to the, the movement of the feet by the Indiana players, we're just a little slow. We're, our heads may be in the game, but uh, the legs aren't following. Well, the rebound statistics show that. Look at those field goals. 60% for Northwest, and that shot by Alford is off the target. Isle pursues, but Pullen gets there first. And now Sean Watts will work across the line as Steve Alford waits. Northwestern's one win is the Minnesota forfeit. And there's a good shot by Sean Morris. Morris averaging 16.4, and he's there. 16. Baseline, Alford. Almost think that shot doesn't have enough trajectory to get there, but it, it does reach. This boy is shot from virtually every square inch on that floor, or any floor during his lifetime. There are times that uh, Steve may not feel like his legs are into it, and you'll see him follow through a little bit more, a little bit longer. There are certain adjustments that he can make and still get the shot in the, in the bucket. Back to Steve on the baseline. He just turns and squares up and pops again. He has his second field goal of the second half and 18 points. And the Hoosiers are back to a 12-point lead, 46-34. And immediately, Northwestern wants a timeout. And we'll take it as well. We'll remind you, you're watching Indiana Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network with the Hoosiers leading Northwestern 46 to 34. Now's the time to save on that new Nissan car or truck you've been wanting. See your Indiana Nissan dealer today and save hundreds during our 1986 tax sale. Plus, get closeout savings on all new Nissan trucks and selected cars. It's two great sales in, in one. one. You can save hundreds during our 86 tax sale. Plus, you can save even thousands with closeout prices on all trucks and selected cars. Get twice the savings now during our 86 tax sale plus at your Indiana Nissan dealer. Opportunity only knocks once. 
And when it knocked at my door, I needed a loan to answer. So I looked to the bank that makes it easy to get a loan. The one that offers more lending choices than anybody. To loan me what I need in a way that's easy to handle. I look to American Fletcher. AFMB. Get the right loan for the right reason right away. I got the loan advantage. Well, you know, when they say, when, when you really need some optimism in the game, you go to the man that can get the points for you. And, of course, Indiana looks to Steve Alford as often as they can. This good baseline move results in his 17th and 18th points. Chucky's uh, just went over 1,500 career points, as a matter of fact. He's chasing Archie Dees now, who is sixth on the all-time list. Steve came in with 1,487. He's got, what, 18 tonight, so he's having himself another fine offensive night. Steve Isle in for Indiana. The passes from Callaway to Isle, and there's the stuff. Isle doesn't get to see a lot of action. But when he does, something like that can really generate his confidence. He's a very athletic player from Hamilton, Ohio. And those two points can really pump him up. Now's the time for Indiana to, to go for the knockout punch. You want to put Northwestern away right now. Saviano, and he moves away from Callaway. Look at Isle battle for the ball. And we have a foul. And that's going to go against Saviano. I have him for only two. Strong drive along the baseline. See the good hustle for the rebound. That is only the second against Rocky Saviano, 6'7 freshman from Indianapolis. Schwabi back in for Northwestern, and he'll replace Brian Pitts. I think Coach Falk here is acknowledging that this is an important time for Northwestern also. Put him back in, even though he's got four fouls. Get your strongest people in there now. See if you can make a run back at Indiana. It's a 14-point lead for the Hoosiers as Morgan pops it from about 22 feet. 50-34. The Hoosiers beginning to put on their shooting shoes down in the well and out and Callaway with the board. Here comes Indiana. A lot of hustle. Callaway has offered on the wing. It won't fall, but we have a foul. We're going to pick it, pick it up around the 10 second line. Ricky's trying to make the decision which way to go. And that isn't a bad choice, no matter how many people are covering Steve Alford. The foul is on Roy Dixon, his first. And Steve is at the line shooting two. 50-34 Indiana. Won't fall. Had a lot of trouble. He claims it's rhythm, not concentration. And I'll tell you, as finitely as he tries to finesse that stroke up there, he can recognize whether it's just a flex of the knee or what. Northwestern down by 17, 51-34. We have 12.58 left to play. Schwabe has it knocked out of his hands, but Callaway also got some skin on that. And he's going to be called for his first uh, personal foul. Northwestern still trying to punch it in to Schwabe or Morris. If they can't get uh, some easy hoops for those guys. Not too many of Morris's points have been easy tonight. Fadeaway jumpers. Good offensive rebounds. Dixon moves left on Alford and misses. There's a good block out by Isle. Here comes Indiana. Good punch inside to Morgan. He pumps it up, misses, tipped up. Isle fights for the ball and comes out with it. He's tied up and it's going to go to Indiana. That time Isle was able to just keep the ball alive. If you can't get your hands right on it initially, at least get a tip or something to keep it going. You, you never know what you're going to end up with. Callaway. Oh, he is so quick starting on that baseline. He's fouled before he even gets to the basket. Stu the penetrates. Feet. As you say, just the quick move right to the baseline. 
Well, the foul was on Schwabe. And at the 12-21 mark, Brian will foul out of the game. Ian Saviano comes over to uh, shake hands with Winston Morgan and the rest of his teammates. Brian Schwabe leaves the game with only four points. He had seven against Indiana at Evanston in January. He's replaced by Buford. Good look at Callaway. Rough week last week. He nursed a bad knee. Iowa tries to chase down the missed free throw. No then, legs in that one. He no, just not a bit. This didn't happen that time. Dixon. Northwestern not rattled, even though they're down by 17. They're still trying to stay in the game plan. Isle tips it away and gets his hand on it a second time. Back to Morgan. Tom Rucker says that Morgan turned it over. On Indiana, that's the third turnover, second half, only four for Northwestern, so they're beginning to slow it down a little bit. I think you'll see that time that Winston still had his momentum going forward and he was going into the passing motion. Judge, judgment call by the official there as to how many steps he had before he released the ball. He said Northwestern was only four. And they had a humongous amount, 15, I believe, in the first half. 16. There's the missed shot, but the rebound, Saviano misses the basket outlet to Alford. So a decided better game by Northwestern from the court in the second half. There's a good effort underneath by Isle, a foul. As Callaway tries to follow, and the Hoosiers will go to the line. So good three good plays there now you see a nice pass from Winston right into Steve Isle Steve wasn't even sure he was open there then a quick move by Isle to the bucket and the follow by Rick good job here's Jeff Gross back in Fulham takes a rest for Northwestern Jeff has not scored in this game he had 12 points against Indiana before as you look at Rocky Saviano with his third personal Look at the intensity on Callaway's face. And once again, and, and that's I was watching his legs that time. You're absolutely right, Steve. Most people watch the ball, and you athletes watch the legs. You want to see him have a nice bend this time. A little more flex that time, but he still didn't get it there. Decent follow through. Got the shooter's roll that time. Callaway one for two. He has five points. 52-34. Which is up to an 18-point lead. Buford off the glass. Rebound. Here comes Indiana's Stu Robinson. To Morgan on the wing. Winston shooting tonight has really looked sharp. He's setting himself up well. And we're getting him the ball in the right places. Well, Rich Falk doesn't want this game to really get completely out of control. He calls another timeout as we've slipped over the 11-minute mark remaining. You're watching Indiana Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana leads Northwestern 54-34. This bug's for all that you do. You keep America going. You keep the juices flowing. You are the muscle, the whole family. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. I'll never forget the day we moved into our first home. What a day! All we really had was about a watercolor that we got on our honeymoon. Well, we've lived in lots of different houses since then, but they've had one thing in common. They've all been protected by a homeowner's policy from Farm Bureau Insurance. Over the fireplace. Oh. <laughs> Actually, they've had two things in common. 54-34, 20-point advantage for the Hoosiers. Statistically, 
That's interesting. 16 to 4 in the last five minutes. Chuck, 50% shooting for the Hoosiers, 7 to 14. And uh, boy, Northwestern has slipped uh, after shooting 60% of the first half. They're 4 of 16 this half for 25%. Northwestern, a little trouble getting it in. Morris tied up over here on the side. Buford breaks it and starts to feed Gross, but throws it away. Good defense all the way around that side. Total into turnover by Northwestern, and now we have another opportunity to add to the lead. That's six to three, second half on turnover. Callaway, this time he gets a little run, a little more spring in his legs, and Rick has seven. A little more than 10 minutes remaining in this game. Dixon and a trip as Morgan. No, that's Robinson after the ball and Stu grabbed his ankle as he went down, but apparently he's all right. Northwestern over the limit. So Stu goes to the line. You see good anticipation now by Stu. He's on the run. That right foot almost did get caught underneath there. On Buford, personal foul number two. And first of the second half as Robinson steps to the line. Stu, probably the most consistent shooter from the stripe right now for Indiana. He's at 81 percent. Steve, of course, having his problems, 78.3 percent in uh, Big Ten play. And there's Stu's eighth point. Average is 6.9, his best 14. And it's 58-34 as Indiana just patiently extends the lead by one and by two. Here's Buford to the baseline. The basket will not count, although it did go over the rim and was tipped in, but we had a foul before. Against Steve Isle, his first. Two free throws. 58-34 as Terry Buford. A freshman, a lot of potential on this team. And it just has to grow and blend together. Rich Falk was uh, very kind. We had a, we talked for about 10 or 15 minutes right in front of the locker room tonight. He said that he really feels the, the new academic regulations that will be employed in the Big Ten play will help him a great deal, Steve. He might have a point there. Plus, he's got uh, at that the last two or three minutes, he had four underclassmen out on the court. That helps, too, with these guys experience early. And you've got a fine player, Sean Morris. Dixon pulling. There's a good feed. Isle falls away, misses a shot. Morgan tries to follow, and it's going to be out of bounds to Northwestern. Well, there's an interesting point that was brought up in this film session that we've referred to yesterday by Coach Ron Felling, and that is that 75% of the shots shot from one side are going to rebound to the other. And it looks like Winston paid attention in the film session because he went right to that side and almost got a nice tip in bucket. Morris misses, gets the rebound. No, that's Saviano. Gets his hand on the ball and rolls it across. Rocky Saviano with his first second half basket. He has four points. Indiana by 20, 58-38, make that by 22, as Alford hits for his 21st. Maybe Steve's trouble at the free throw line should be to just move out to 20 feet <laughs> and shoot a jump shot, because that's deadly. How far off the lane would they let you shoot your free throw? You got me, Chuck. You know, just tell you, I know Wilt Chamberlain used to try about every position, he might be the expert on that one. <laughs> That's about right. We, I can remember seeing him almost at the top of the key. Turnover before the basket. Good quick move into the middle. Looked like a little shuffle of the feet before he got the shot. And there are the turnovers, seven to three. Outside again by Alford, no good. Saviano with the board. Here come the Wildcats. They're down by 22. Gross double team rolls it across the rim. Morris back up. It won't fall. Morris again. Good. Tough rebound basket by Morris. 
stayed with it. Once again, keeping it alive. Gets the reward of two points. Back to a 20-point lead as Indiana trying to keep this aggressiveness going and right from the free throw line, Callaway for his ninth point. We have eight minutes remaining. 62-40, Indiana. It's not going to be the wild scoring contest that we saw up at Northwestern, 102 to 60, or uh, yes, 102-65. But it's a game that has seen Indiana controlling and forcing a lot of the turnovers that's resulted in this strong lead. A personal foul against Indiana will be against Isle again. His second as Winston Morgan comes out. Todd Jadlow is in the lineup for Indiana. So the Hoosiers build just a little height. 6'5 Morgan on the bench and 6'10 Jadlow in the lineup. Working the ball around Joe Flanagan in the lineup. He handled the ball. Here he is, Flanagan. Saviano tries to go down to the baseline, and I believe that was touched by Jadlow. Yes, so it'll be Northwestern to toss it in. Morris plays a very hard game, and it's very, I would imagine, exceptionally difficult when uh, your team is just not doing well to really keep your spirits up, Steve. Well, yeah, I think that would be extremely difficult, but he seems to handle it very well. Well, he's an excellent ball player. Look at him playing outside. Pretty good first step as he gets past Isle and hits from about nine feet. That's the tough shot. Pretty good defense on him that time. And still managing to get it in the hole. Coach Knight had a little conversation with Steve Isle about that defensive position. 7.05 left to be played in this game. Indiana goes on the road for three tough games, then returns home to play Minnesota, and we'll talk more about those later on, but it's a tough road trip. Indiana has an uphill battle the rest of the way, five of their last seven games on the road. 62-42, right back to Alford, behind a screen by Isle. There's a rebound by Jadlow, back out to Robinson. Now Jadlow sets the screen. And a whistle. And we have a foul. And I believe that's going to go against Rick Calloway. Or Isle. Let's wait to see. It's Calloway. His second. Sean Morris is sitting down taking a rest as Kukas comes back in the lineup for Northwestern. You see the bound coming off. One of those things that the officials see bodies flying and Rick seemed to be jumping right in the midst of it. Sean sits down with 20 points. We had a good shot of him just a moment ago. Really hard game this young man's play. He has two more years. Putting a little ice on his uh, lower back right now. Planning an inside offensive foul. Boy, Jadlow. Even though he had a little size on him, just set and stayed motionless. <laughs> it has to be hard to do. Todd getting the defensive position. You got to get your feet set and accept the consequences in that particular instance. Well, I remember one game. You thought you had your feet set. Do I need to remind you about that? 92-90 at Dayton, Ohio in 75. You need not remind me. <laughs> I haven't been reminded this week, though. I, oh, is that right? Yeah. Stu Robinson from in front of the line. And Robinson in double figures with 10. Dixon to Flanagan. Northwestern, as we pointed out before, out of the game scoring-wise, but not out as far as their determination. They're really playing what appears to be a poised game. Save the turnovers. 64-42, 22-point Indiana lead as Fullen makes a move on Robinson and scores. Kelly 
Elliott has 12 points. Down to the last five minutes and 20 seconds of this game. And Callaway goes down hard. Flanagan assists him back up again. As the foul goes against Dixon. Steve Isle replaced by Todd Meyer. We have not seen Meyer play anymore, and it's not due to the fact that he hasn't had any good games. He played well at Minnesota. Did an excellent job of sparking there. And played well last Thursday night, but he's nursing a sore knee. And trying not to be redundant here, but he has the flu now. Oh, is that about right? as bad as anyone. Yeah, he really was under the weather and uh, was almost going to be let go yesterday. Go home and rest a bit, but there was too much to talk about, I think. Second by Callaway is good. He has 11. Andre Harris, we see him for the first time as Rick comes to the bench. There's Harris, 6'7", from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's a junior by eligibility, but his first year in the major college level, he came in from junior college play. 66-44, the Hoosiers still by 22. As we tip down to the final five minutes, rebound to Jadlow. Indiana down quickly to set up offensively inside Harris handles the ball for the first time and he'll go to the line Elliot Fullen didn't start but that's his first personal foul I think it's important to note that Rick Calloway had a pretty inspired second half and that not only helped us pull away in this game but it's going to be important in the next few games that he go into those as confident as can be. And we're going to get some much needed rest here also in the next seven, eight days. Four rebounds and two assists in the second half of Rick to support that statement. You know, there is so much anticipation from the Indiana coaching staff on just how quickly uh, they would like to see Andre Harris begin to utilize his athletic abilities in a positive way. He is just such, look at this, he's such an exceptional ball player athletically. How well he skies for that ball. Look at the, look at the encouragement he gets from his teammates. Look at this block again. This is astounding. A man's head is halfway up to the rim. 31 blocks yeah. this year. Well, I don't think there's any question about the talent. We just have to get it channeled in the right direction. Well, that's not not to do criticism to it. No, no, not at all. Well, remember early in the season, he just had problems staying in ball games, committing some silly fouls and getting in foul trouble early. Well, I think Coach is beginning to think the only way that's a piece of debris has fall on, uh, fallen on the floor right in front of Fulham. Five second call, and that will go against uh, Northwestern. Good defense by Indiana. Rich Falk goes over. I think it was a pass. Well, that's the 25th turnover for the Wildcats. That's just got to be frustrating. And uh, Rich just wonders, what can I do? 68-44, the Hoosiers by 24 points, but four minutes remaining in this game. Harris high over his head. The lob to Jablo, his former teammate at uh, Benton J.C., and there's a good reverse layup for two from Messrs. Jadlo and the Harris on the assist. We'll just title this one the Kansas Connection. Nice look inside. Strong left hand move by Todd that time. Isle back in for Steve Alford. And Steve, who was still sucking pretty hard uh, trying to get over the effects of the virus sits down with 21 points right at his average of 22 and a half four steals tonight Chuck and four assists for Steve while we watch Jadlo shoot this free throw and it won't take too long he's pretty accurate there's uh, well time out we'll talk about when we come back the point about how big men can shoot you're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network to score Indiana 71, Northwestern 44. You know that annoying little buzzer in your car? The one that reminds you to fasten your seatbelt? 
Well, I've got a fantastic trick for turning it off. About half of all the traffic deaths in Indiana could be prevented if everyone just wore a seatbelt. So, make it click. This message brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance and your Indiana State Police. Healthy crops have always grown from this land, but its newest use pretty much turns it into miracle soil. You see, RV Welsh Investments is creating the Meridian Technology Center. These lush 188 acres will offer a business center with drive-in service and storage capabilities, plus multi-floor office space. And throughout the remaining lakes and trees will build to your very specific needs. From this soil, the most miraculous technology park in Indiana. There's the score. Now let me go very quickly. Steve Green, big man, 6'10", 6'11", uh, size of Fondre Harris with her jumping ability. I have often wondered why they don't utilize the reverse layup or the reverse jam over their head the way Bill Walton used to do with UCLA. Remember in 1973 when we played them in uh, St. Louis. And Walton made a good move where he'd make a baseline move under the basket and then reverse jam over his head. I think big men could utilize that very easily. Now you're talking about a, just a superb talent in a guy like Walton or Ralph Sampson and these kind of people, Ewing. But they do have that ability to use the bucket as a, a screen against the other bigger players that they play against. What Jadlow came close to doing. He came close to doing that just a moment ago. Pardon me. Foul on Harris, his first. And that puts Saviano at the line. Rocky with four points. Played a tough game tonight. Yes, he, he has. around the, the hoop quite a bit and banged and got some rebounds, and now he's going to the line. Heck of a baseball pitcher. Boy, you can throw That's a fastball. You can, he gets it there quick. Six rebounds, by the way, for Rocky. Out of for Buff. Tell you, it's 6-7. And the bulk on that frame, I'd hate to see that fastball coming down there. He can get it there. Who knows how many athletes today are really doubling in their skills. We went through a period where, you know, football, basketball, baseball, Everyone played everything. Then all of a sudden they specialized for a while. Now they're coming back to multiple skills. 322 remaining. 7146. It's off the rim. No good. And we're going to have a foul against Indiana. And I believe Todd Myers, the culprit under the Hoosier offensive basket. Offensive foul. Myers first. Here's Todd taking it to the hoop. And the fellow we just talked about, Rocky Saviano, held his ground and got a charging foul out of it. Indiana with a 25-point lead, and time is running out. Down to 3-10 left in this contest. And we will probably have some available time. Hope to be able to, in our post-game show, talk with uh, Randy Whitman here for tonight's game. You had a chance to see him if you were watching the opening of tonight's program. Lob inside to Pitts. Brian up and in. There's a situation where Todd fronted the man with uh, hopes of getting that help side. Well, there was defense. There's some good body control by Todd Meyer on the feed. Andre Harris picked him up well coming down through the lane. See the ball going into Andre right now. Take a quick look to the middle. Nice scoop pass. You're right, he was able to roll that thing up there and get a couple shots at the free throw line. Change in mid-direction, huh? He didn't seem to bother him there too much. Were you ever called upon to change direction that often? <laughs> <laughs> called upon to deliver? No. <laughs> Make a lot of fun of Steve Green, but Coach Knight himself has said this man probably possesses one of the best 18-foot shots from virtually every perimeter position on the floor. Great outside shooter during his days here at Indiana, 73, 74, and 75. Look at Harris go high for the ball, but Pitts gets it for Northwestern. Saviano. No, let's make that number 33. 
Petrovic. Milan Petrovic from Crown Point, Indiana, his first basket. Indiana into the post. It goes to Jad Lowe. Look at that rebound effort. Hoosier is battling for the ball. And out comes Northwestern on the block. Buford trying to set it up down to a minute 42 and a foul. Steve Isle thought he had the ball. Barry Carmen said you had the hand and that's your third foul. Morel Branch, 6'5", senior from Memphis, Tennessee, replacing Saviano. Very good job, Rocky. Awaiting the ball, Terry Buford from Indianapolis Cathedral. Misses the first on a one and one, and Isle clears for the Hoosiers. Feed underneath. Oh, Harris has it blocked away. Petrovic up court and stolen right back by Indiana. A little running game by the Hoosiers. Robinson tries to slow it down. Here comes Petrovic. A good up court pass results in a foul against Indiana. Looks like it would be a one and one foul now because even though know, Gross was trying to shoot, he was still in the Good bounce pass from Petrovic. Here we get the fake. Here we get the foul. I have no way of knowing whether Jeff Gross felt the presence of Andre Harris over his back, which is why he put the ball fake up. But knowing that Harris is on the floor is enough of an intimidation anyway. Harris had 18 against Northwestern at Northwestern. And Gross, believe it or not, his first two points this evening with a minute eight seconds remaining. On the drive, and he'll go to the line. Todd Meyer. Foul will go against Branch. Meyer's best game this year, eight points. And he was two for two until that one, now two for three. Make that two for four. Back up by Chad Lowe. Count the basket. Free throw coming off short. Andre gets a hand on it to keep it alive. Todd knows what to do. Just turn and get up towards the hoop. Well, Brian Pitts at seven feet is the tallest player on the court. And he caught that ball well on its way down. Isle tries to go for the ball over the shoulder and commits the foul, his fourth. With 47 seconds remaining, both teams over the limit. That sends Branch to the line for the Wildcats, one and one. This game is dragging out. We may not have a chance to talk to Randy Whitman, gentlemen. Our director, Jerry Wheatley, says we will talk to him one way or the other. And when Jerry Wheatley talks, you listen. listen. That's right. Todd Meyer from outside. Back up by Jadlow. Misses and the tip in on the opposite side by Andre Harris. Andre's first field goal. Stu's got four crosses tonight. Four rebounds, four steals, and four assists. Played awfully well. With time running down, Petrovic puts it up. Offensive foul against Milan. And we have 15 seconds remaining with Courtney Whitty coming back into the Hoosier lineup, replacing Isle. Bob Knight over to greet him. A pat on the back. Played a good game.
counting down the final 10 seconds. The Hoosiers will look for the last shot and then they throw it away. Burl Self sat out last year, did not do any officiating, had a bad knee and had some surgery on it. So it's nice to see Burl back. And there's double dribble at the buzzer. No time for any exchange. And we've run out of numbers on the clock at double zero. The final score, Indiana 77, Northwestern 52. Northwestern's record now to one and ten as the coaches exchange their greetings. Bob Knight talking to Sean Morris. Pat on the back. Morris really played a fine game, 20 points. Indiana's record goes to 16 and 5 overall, 8 and 3 in the conference, and a tie for the conference lead with Michigan. Now we'll be back to check on the scoring, review tonight's game, and talk with Randy Whitman in just a minute. You can buy a lot of things with credit cards. You can cash checks with most of them. Some can even get you cash. Now there's one card that can do all that and more. A new card that doesn't charge a membership fee. One with no charge for extra cards. A card that offers you extra savings on products and services. Introducing the Hooks Promise card. Hooks Promise is as good as gold. Apply for yours today. The young lady for the tonsillectomy. First time I was here, I was 10. And they took my tonsils out. Now I manage this hospital. And for communications, I rely on GTE. When we added this wing, our GTE account manager even helped us tie into nationwide medical data networks. And GTE services on tap 24 hours a day. She's going to be fine. Any messages? Sure, on your terminal. It takes a lot to satisfy us, but GTE does. Well, the face needs no introduction. He doesn't have his number 24 on, but Randy Whitman sat the bench tonight in this lopsided victory. Randy, it's good seeing you, and welcome back to the Assembly Hall. Well, it's always good to come back home and uh, see, see the home fam fans and see, see the team play. I know the Hoosiers have been keeping track. Hoosier fans, we get the cable and see a lot of Atlanta ball games. You had a game winner the other night. You guys are really cooking, playing some good ball. Well, we really are. We've got it uh, playing very well together, and we've gotten these last two wins before the All-Star break that really uh, has gotten us over the hump. I guess Milwaukee, what? The about two and a half, three game lead? We're three games behind them right now going in the All-Star break, and we've been playing very well. We've got a lot of confidence of winning the division. Fratello, your young coach, he, uh, he's really done the job, hasn't he? Well, he's come a long way. You know, this was his first head coaching job of any type, and uh, he's learned as well as, as we have as, as players, and, and he's come a long way. Well, you got your taste of being an assistant coach for a night. Uh, after you get done with your pro day, you want to go back to Ben Davis or coach? Well, you, you never know. It's, it, you don't know what will present itself, but I, I, if I, we're going to count this one as one, then I'm 1-0 here tonight. Randy, we're 8-3 and three now. We needed these two at home, and now we go on the road five of the next seven. Uh, I know you keep track of the Hoosiers, but uh, your head and shoulders look at the ball club. Well, I thought they, they came out uh, in the second half tonight and really played well. They, they kind of uh, had a slow uh, 10 minutes the first half. They really came out and created things defensively for themselves and, and ran away at the ball game. Tell your mom and dad we said hi and uh, continue the best of luck, Randy. Thanks a lot. Randy Whitman, back to you, Chuck. Okay, thanks, Joe. And Randy, thank you very much. Nice to see you again. We'll be back to continue with our post-game show in just 60 seconds. For young Wilbur Shaw, the Shelby County Fair was the event of the year. Good luck, Wilbur. We'll do our best. Great belly. And the annual goat race was the highlight of the fair. From these humble beginnings, Wilbur Shaw went on to win the Indianapolis 500 race three times and distinguish himself as one of the greatest drivers in the history of auto racing. Yeah. Wilbur Shaw, another Indiana legend brought to you with pride by Farm Bureau Insurance. Indiana was led in scoring tonight by Steve Alford with 21. The Hoosiers had four in double figures tonight. Winston Morgan, Alford, Stu Robinson, and Ricky Calloway, Rick Calloway. And the Hoosiers had five at Evanston in that 102-65 win up there. 
for uh, Northwestern. It was Sean Morris, leading scorer with 20 points. One other in double figures, Elliot Pullen, and no one else above six for uh, for Northwestern. Overview, Steve? Well, a couple of things. Uh, the whole game through, forced errors. We forced Northwestern into uh, a lot more errors, I'm sure, than what they had anticipated. And the other thing was just coming out in the second half. We had a 12-point lead. We pushed it up to 25. I think it was at about the 15 or 16-minute mark where we went for the knockout punch, and we got it. Okay, we'll continue with our post-game show after we hear from our local stations. This is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. 